All right, y'all. This is uh, probably an unboxing video that I am the most excited about of any that I've done. This is a video that is basically 20 years in the making. Uh, basically, this is my uh, one of my grill knives. This is a knife that I've wanted for a long time but have been un unable to get basically because of Pennsylvania knife laws. Uh, so what we're looking at today is the Microtech Ultratech. So in Pennsylvania, automatic knives have been illegal um, <clears throat> for quite some time, as far back as I, can, I, I know. Uh, but here just recently, I think it was November 3rd, they signed a new bill into, into law that would uh, make it so that it was legal to own automatic knives. And that went into effect on January 3rd. Since January 3rd, it is completely legal to own in Pennsylvania. So I'm super excited about this unboxing. I just got this thing in. Um, honestly, it's a knife that I've always wanted, but I've never even held. I've never seen one of these in person, never touched one. I don't have any knife stores obviously around me that would sell them because of being in Pennsylvania. Uh, they don't sell them because they were illegal. So, uh, so this this is the Microtech Ultratech. It comes in a pretty nice box. Never compromise. Setting the standard for precision cutlery since 1994. Um, so then they have a little thing here on the back about welcome to the Microtech family, uh, and we're not going to read all that. But I'm going to break right into it and get to the main meat and potatoes of this whole thing, which is the knife itself. Look real quick here, um, got some material, product manual, Ooh, looks like it does come with a nice Microtech emblem sticker. Uh, and then just some documentation on knife care, sharpening, repair, how to open, close, that kind of thing. And this is a dual action automatic knife, so for those of you who don't know what that means, it means that it comes out and goes back in um, automatically with the same button just reversing which way you activate the button. So, all right, so here's the knife itself. So the Ultratech, I will say that uh, realistically, I I would have loved to have gotten one of their larger knives, like their, I think it's called a Troodon, the Combat Troodon. Um, but those those things start, start at about $500. So that was a little outside my price range or quite a bit outside my price range or my budget. Uh, honestly, this knife is a little bit above my normal budget for knives. Um, I don't buy high-end knives like this very often. So maybe once a year I'll get something, you know, that's in a couple hundred dollar range. This thing is, is probably going to be the most expensive knife that I currently own. Of course, you know, you always tell yourself you won't spend past a certain amount on a knife. And that only holds true until the next knife you buy that you you spend more than that on so but anyway just uh in hand this thing is super light um i like the color of it again being colorblind i can't speak too much to how well that is in od green which is what this is supposed to be um and this is supposed to come the blade is supposed to come in their apocalyptic finish which my understanding is just kind of an aggressive stone wash so we're going to see here what that looks like. And yes, that is exactly what it looks like. Um, it is just kind of a very aggressive, I don't know if you can see that, but like an aggressive stone wash on the blade. So I gotta say, um, yeah, I like that blade, uh, but more importantly is the action on that thing, right? Oh, that's just so awesome, guys. A lot of people say, you know, why do you need a double action uh, out the front automatic? And, you know, the truth is, do you need it? No. Uh, but is it really cool to have? Absolutely. Um, that is just an awesome feeling uh, when you activate that thing. And, of course, you got the, the dual edge here. Now, I've heard varying degrees on what how sharp these things come. I'm honestly not sure. And even feeling it. The dagger edge is a little something different because it's so thick behind the edge. It doesn't make the best slicer in the world because it is very thick behind the edge. Of course, it, it does a lot better at piercing. Um, I do have some notebook paper here that I used in a previous test so we can see. Yeah, so you could tell it is sharp. But it definitely, you can also tell that it's thick behind the edge there. So 
it, it doesn't slice the best, but it is definitely very sharp. Now, as far as the steel on this, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get down here and look at this. All right, it is. So I don't know if you can see that there. Hopefully I was holding it up to the camera in a way that maybe you can see that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know how well that shows up, but that is the... Uh, that is your M390, which is what it said it came in, but sometimes with these Microtechs, you don't know whether it's going to come in LMAX, M390, or uh, some other similar steel. Um, they all use roughly, it's it's steels that have very similar properties, so I'm not disappointed by the M390 at all. Um, I'll tell you guys, that's going to be a fidget toy right there. That's pretty awesome, just feeling that thing slam in and out like that uh, with some authority. So I did pick up some rim oil, uh, in case you're not aware, that's how they say to clean these things. They put their proprietary screws in here. You can buy one of uh, the tools that will allow you to get into this knife, but it voids your warranty if you do. Uh, so you're better off just sending it back to Microtech if you have something that you can't fix on your own without having to tear it apart. But it seems like from what I've been able to tell that probably 90% of the issues you run into, you'll be able to solve with just a good cleaning. Um, and what you do is you actually spray the rim oil up in to the knife and then you just activate it a few times back and forth and that'll get you cleaned out and sorted up. Now this thing, um, one of the things that people worry about with obviously with these types of knives is well what happens if you activate it into your leg? You know, what do you do then? So uh, let me just see here. I'm going to grab just... I'm going to grab a box that came in here and put it up here just to kind of show you what happens if you do activate it. So you can see there that I did get some penetration. It went up to right about there. So it's still not going to feel good. But then it, it right, right now it's not activating because it came off track. But you just pull out on the blade and that puts it back up on the track. So um, if you do activate it into something course because of that sharp tip you're probably going to get a little bit of a puncture but it's not going to do a lot of damage and then to get, of course you got nothing there so to get it back on track you just pull the blade and it snaps right back on track so no big deal um so yeah so that's kind of a safety issue there you don't have to worry about a thing deploying into your leg and going you know half the depth of the blade into your leg or anything um so as far as, like I said, one of the things that I had not seen anything on is the apocalyptic finish. Um, I couldn't find any videos that had anything on that. And I will say that basically it is just a very aggressive stonewash. So it just looks like this thing is fairly well worn kind of just on the finish right off the bat, which the nice thing about that, and again, trying to get this to focus, the nice thing about that is it should kind of mask or hide some of those uh, issues that you might come into. I'm going to put a little more light on that. See if you guys can see it a little better. Um, and that that should help maybe, you know, hide some of those imperfections, some of the marring on the blade. Um, get down here where you can kind of see what that looks like. And honestly, actually, let me just go ahead and retract that. Uh, it's kind of the same finish here on the belt clip. You've, you've got that same finish. And then, of course, you have your glass breaker here kind of the glass breaker pommel with a little bit of a lanyard hole here in case you wanted to use that. Can't see myself using either of those. Um, I guess having the glass breaker there in case you need to use it. Uh, you do have your serial number, of course, um, that is showing you uh, the serial number on the knife and then the date that it was made. This one, 10-20-2022. 20, 20, um, Microtech, you got your emblem on the front here. So guys, just first impressions. Uh, again, just kind of going over this thing real quick. Overall, you've got a length of eight and a half inches overall. You've got 3.4 inch blade. You've got the M390 steel on this one with the apocalyptic finish, OD green, 6061 aluminum handle. It's a double action out the front dagger style blade is the one that I got. You can get that in different styles, but this one's the dagger style. And uh, now I have heard people say about how rough this is, and you can feel that already. That is, that's a real rough texture, so your thumb's not going to slip. But if you sit there and fidget with it all day, you may end up with a callus on that thumb or a blister, at least initially. Uh, very aggressive. Um, also, that button, while I'm not having any difficult difficulty with activating the blade, 
uh, I can tell you that there are going to be some people who really struggle to push that far enough out to get that to activate and then also retract it. Um, in fact, I know that there are some people uh, that actually have to use two hands to pull that button back so that they can get that to retract. So if you've got a pretty strong grip, um, you're not going to have any problem with that. That's going to be easy for you to activate. Uh, but if that's not the case for you, if you're somebody who doesn't have a, a rather strong grip, uh, strong hands, then this is probably not going to be the best knife for you because you're probably going to struggle to get that thing to activate in and out like that. Um, as far as just a couple other real quick thoughts, um, one of the things I'd like to try and do is see if I can reverse this clip because I will say that it does create a hot spot in my hand when I'm holding it with that facing the inside palm of my hand with me being right-handed. I think it would make more sense uh, for it to be on the outside. I can say that it just feels a lot more comfortable in my left hand having the smooth side tucked into my palm and the rough side, if you will, with the clip being where my fingers are. I just feel like it works a lot better and isn't going to create that hot spot that I'm getting holding it the way that I am there with the belt clip tucked into the palm of my hand. Uh, so that's just one other thing to kind of be aware of. Probably not my favorite feature on the knife uh, is having it mounted that way, but I get it because you're talking right hand carry, right? So if I'm going to put this in my pocket for my right hand, then I need my clip to be on this side. So that's kind of a catch 22. If I reverse the clip over, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to have, when you pull it out of your pocket, you're going to have your thumb on the wrong side. It's not going to be on the side where the button is to activate. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what you do there. I haven't, haven't really thought it through just kind of noticing that that does create a hot spot in my hand. So I don't know that reversing it's going to be a great solution. Um, unless I figure out a different way to carry it, like maybe a sheath or something, a holster of some sort where it wouldn't matter that the belt clip is on the other side or the pocket clips on the other side. So there are just kind of some things that I'm noticing there. Um, definitely going to be a little rough on the thumb that clips a little rough on the inside of the palm of the hand. Uh, so ergonomically it's probably not the best, but the knife is just so cool that I just don't really care to be honest. Um, it's, it's just being able to activate that knife and having that thing pop out like that um, and retract so smoothly uh, more than makes up for some of the downsides or the negatives for me. I realize that it's just a cool factor. But, you know, one of the other things that I, I haven't really seen on any other videos is people talking about blade play, right? So everybody will mention that an automatic, especially an out the front, has some inherent blade play. That's just something you have to live with. It's going to be there. So I will say that there is some blade play, right? I can, I can feel some movement. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, and that's side to side this way. But then also if you do it, I don't know if you can hear that. There is a little bit there as well. But I'm going to say that even though there is some, and when I'm jiggling it like that, I can kind of, you know, really make that noise or whatever. And it's like, oh, wow, that's moving. But really, if you just push back, or pull forward one way or the other, you're not getting almost, it's, it's such a small amount of give before it just stops hard. Um, so I don't feel, and side to side's the same way. Like you're not moving it hardly at all. So while it might sound like it, if I'm making it rattle or you can kind of see it moving when you really feel it, it's pretty negligible. Uh, and the knife, once it does have just that little bit of, of movement, you know, once it hits where it stops, it's it's solid. It, it doesn't have, you know, just a crazy amount of slop there. And I feel like they do have to create just a little bit there on their tolerances. They got to have some of that movement. Uh, otherwise, the finest little bit of grit or sand or anything dirt that would get in there would just be jamming up your, your ability to activate that knife. So um, I, I'm not disappointed with the blade play. I think that it's at an acceptable level, and I don't think that it's going to really hurt the functionality of the knife. So... That's just uh, kind of my thoughts on a couple of things that I haven't seen anybody else mention on any videos that I've seen for Ultratex. Uh, you know, I haven't looked at a ton of them, but I have watched a few. I never saw anybody mention about, you know, that that clip kind of rubbing and, and uh, causing some hot spots there on the hand. I have heard other people mention about the button, the activation button there being rough on the thumb. 
And I've heard people mention blade play, but never really demonstrate how much or little there is. And so I just wanted to show people that there really is not that much blade play. Uh, it's definitely there, but I, I don't think it's going to have much of an effect on the, you know, the utility of that knife. I think that that's going to function well. So I want, want to just go ahead and throw in some size comparisons here, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what size that is. Comparing it to some knives that people know fairly well, you've got the paramilitary, uh, paramilitary two there, and you can see that realistically, you've got almost the same length of blade, of course, a much thinner blade on the Ultratech, but almost the same length of blade and almost the same length of handle. So overall, very comparable in size to the paramilitary two. Uh, another knife that is well known is going to be the Benchmade Griptilian. Uh, kind of the same thing there. You're looking at about the same size on the blade and about the same size as far as lengthwise on the handle. Of course, in both these cases, the Ultratech is a much thinner knife overall, both in the handle and in the blade itself. Uh, but as far as length goes, uh, you're looking at a pretty comparable knife there. And then, of course, the last one that I'm going to pull out here is going to be the Cold Steel Recon 1. Now, the Recon 1 is quite a bit larger overall in both length and size than the Ultratech. The Ultratech is a much smaller, thinner, lighter knife. This is a heavy, beefy knife. But you can see here that you've got quite a bit longer blade there. And also, you're looking at about maybe a half inch or so, uh, quarter inch to half inch longer in both the handle and the blade when it comes to the Cold Steel Recon. But just to give you an idea of the size of the knife, it is very similar in size to the Paramilitary 2, which is a very, of course, common knife that most knife people are gonna be familiar with. Uh, but guys, I gotta say, I'm super excited about this knife. Um, of course, I'll have to use it uh, and, and get back to you and tell you what I think after actually using it a little bit. But just from initial impressions, man, guys, I'm excited about this thing. That's that's just awesome. And uh, hopefully that you can kind of get the feeling of that. I think it looks like I'm getting a little bit of video lag here while doing this thing, but um, hopefully you can kind of get how smooth that is and, and how awesome that is. But overall guys, Microtech, Ultratech, uh, kind of the the king of the out the front automatic knives, right? This is, this is the one that put them on the map and made them famous. Um, and there's a reason for that. So super excited about this knife. I uh, hope you guys like the initial impressions video and I might follow up here at some point once I've had a chance to use it and tell you what I think.